all the energy sources used to generate electricity, nuclear power is, understandably, the least understood. The fuel bundles are made up of completely safe inert uranium pellets. But the process of nuclear fission happens at a subatomic level. It is invisible to the eye, and it can be hard to grasp a process which cannot be seen. Thermonuclear generation of electricity uses one of the simplest forms of power, steam, with one of the most recently discovered and complex forms of energy, nuclear fission. Let's visit Atlantic Canada's only nuclear power plant at Point La Pro, 20 kilometers west of St. John. Point La Pro produces more electricity than any other of New Brunswick's generating stations. This is because it typically runs at 90% of its capacity, 660 megawatts, supplying 40% of New Brunswick's needs. Point Le Pro houses a single Canadian-designed CANDU-6 reactor. The station was built by NB Power between 1975 and 1983 at an estimated cost of $1.4 billion. With an operational lifespan of 25 years, the plant was due to be shut down in 2008. However, as that date approached, the decision was made to refurbish the facility and keep it running. In 2008, the station suspended operation and began a five-year refurbishment at the cost of $2.4 billion. In late 2012, Point Le Pro was back online producing electricity. How does it work? The energy comes from a process called nuclear fission. Fission means to split apart. In nuclear fission, a uranium atom is split into smaller parts. This is done by firing neutrons at it. A neutron is a small atomic particle with no electrical charge. When the uranium atom is struck by the neutron, it absorbs it. But in doing so, it becomes very unstable and immediately splits apart. It throws off smaller atoms and neutrons. This sets off a chain reaction, splitting other uranium atoms. And it gives off tremendous energy in the form of radiation and heat. You know what happens from here. Once you have heat, you have steam, and you're spinning generators and producing electricity. At Le Pro, Processed uranium is used as the fuel. Only 0.72% of this uranium is needed for fission to initially occur. You've probably heard of Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. Well, this is where it becomes very practical. Einstein's formula tells us that mass and energy are different forms of the same thing. In that original uranium atom, energy was holding everything together, and it actually had a mass. Split the atom, and that energy is released. When you add the weight of the leftover products after fission, they actually weigh less than the original uranium atom. That is, some of the mass seems to have disappeared. The great thing about nuclear fission is that a very small mass is transformed into a very large amount of energy. Einstein discovered that the amount of energy is determined by multiplying the mass by the speed of light squared. The speed of light, of course, is anyone? Anyone? Okay, it's 300 million meters per second. So we multiply the really small difference in mass by 90 quadrillion. The energy from this process means that one kilogram of uranium produces more energy than 20 tons of coal. At Point Le Pro, this reaction takes place inside of, wait for it, the reactor. The reactor is housed in a concrete containment building, 42 meters high, with walls that are 1.2 meters thick. The containment system consists of the structure itself, an automated water dousing system, building coolers, two airlocks, 
and a filtered air discharge system, all designed to internalize any radiation and cool the reactor in case of problems. The reactor core holds 380 fuel rods. Each rod contains 12 uranium fuel bundles weighing about 20 kilograms. One bundle can produce enough electricity to power a typical house for 100 years. Each bundle stays in the reactor for between six months to a year. That's about 7,600 kilograms of fuel per year. By comparison, Bell Dune Coal Generating Station goes through 7,600 kilograms of coal in about 40 minutes. So fission releases heat. As the atoms collide with each other, heat is produced. Now in other thermal generating stations, water would simply be piped through the fuel channels and this heat would produce steam. But the fission reaction requires a special kind of water called heavy water to transfer the heat. Here's why. Regular or light water contains hydrogen atoms with no neutrons. So it absorbs free moving neutrons very easily. As we just observed, the fission reaction releases free neutrons. But these are needed to sustain the reaction and keep it going by colliding with other uranium atoms. So if light water was piped through the fuel channels to be heated into steam, it would also absorb free neutrons and actually interfere with the reaction process, slowing it down. Heavy water comes to the rescue. Heavy water contains a different form of hydrogen called deuterium that already has one neutron. Heavy water is much less likely to absorb free neutrons. When heavy water is piped through the fuel channels, it absorbs heat but does not slow the reaction process nearly as much as normal water. The heavy water circulates around the reactor in a closed loop. This means it never escapes or comes in contact with any other fluid. The heavy water loop passes through the fuel channels absorbing heat and then runs through a heat exchanger. Here, the heat is finally applied to a boiler which turns light water to steam. The closed loop assures that virtually none of the heavy water is lost and no light water is exposed to radiation. Once high pressure steam is produced, nuclear plants and fossil fuel plants generate electricity in much the same way. Steam is passed through a turbine which spins a generator, in this case at 1800 RPM, and electricity is sent to the grid. To cool down the used steam, and to keep the reactor itself cool for safe operation, LaPro uses over 25,000 liters of water every second from the Bay of Fundy. This seawater is warmed up about 10 degrees Celsius and sent back out into the bay. Nuclear power stations are generally used to provide what is called baseload electricity. Baseload is the amount of electricity in constant demand 24 hours a day 365 days a year and is not subject to variation. With the new refurbishment, LaPro is expected to run at over 90% capacity for the next 28 years. Nuclear power plants are ideal for this steady baseload demand. Two reasons why. They take a very long time to start up and shut down. The Mactaquac Dam can increase its output from zero to full power in a matter of minutes. It would take days for Point LaPro to achieve the same thing. It is not easy for nuclear power generation to respond quickly to large changes in demand. Secondly, nuclear power plants, while very expensive to build, have extremely low fuel costs. The uranium comes from Saskatchewan and, as we've seen, a little goes a long way. New fuel bundles are completely safe to be handled and pose no risk. Only after being used in the fission process inside the reactor do they emit radiation. 
Fuel bundles can be exchanged inside of the reactor while the power plant operates. This is done using robots and is a unique feature of the Canadian CANDU reactor design. Used fuel bundles are lowered into a water-filled discharge bay and transferred to storage bays. All operations in the storage bay are carried out underwater since light water absorbs radiation and heat. These storage bays have room to store a minimum of 10 years worth of used fuel. Storage in this way is a necessary step to make the used fuel safer. Within one hour of being removed from the reactor, the used fuel bundles have lost over 60% of their radioactivity. Over a span of 10 years, radioactivity has been reduced by 99.9%. After underwater storage for about seven years, spent fuel is kept on site in large concrete canisters. These canisters can withstand 800 degree fires for about 30 minutes or water immersion for eight hours. While Point Lepro has enough space to store all of its used fuel indefinitely, a new long-term storage facility for all of Canada is being developed. This facility will store containers 500 to 1,000 meters below the Canadian Shield. There have been a handful of very serious disasters at nuclear power facilities. Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, Fukushima. It's necessary that nuclear generating stations put safety as a top priority, and that includes locating them in areas which experience very little seismic activity. Here, Point Lepro is on solid ground. If you want to avoid earthquakes or volcanoes, New Brunswick should be high on your list. In addition to a stable environment, the daily work safety policies and practices in the nuclear industry, such as at Point Lepro, are some of the most stringent of any industry in the world. Point Lepro has logged one million consecutive work hours without a lost time accident, a total of three times in its history. Can-do reactors also have many automated safety elements built in. The fuel channels themselves can only maintain the nuclear reaction process if they are mechanically sound. Should temperatures start to increase abnormally, these fuel channels will start to deform and bend due to gravity, instantly reducing the efficiency of the reaction and cooling the reactor. In the event of a complete power failure, a shutdown device held in place by electromagnets automatically drops under gravity into the core to shut down the reaction. It works by using neutron absorbing rods that kill the reaction. Remember, neutrons are needed to ensure that the fission reaction continues. Neutron absorbing light water automatically floods the reactor helping to shut down the reaction. Furthermore, a neutron absorbing liquid can also be injected into the reactor. Nuclear power generation ends with the usual process of steam spinning a turbine which turns a generator which produces electricity. The big difference is that rather than using combustion to heat the steam, LePro captures the heat produced by nuclear fission, a more complex process involving atomic particles and heavy water. The construction costs are significant, but the fuel costs are very low. Environmental considerations include safe handling of radioactive spent fuel and heated seawater being returned to the Bay of Fundy. Each form of electricity generation has pros and cons and plays an integral role in the electric grid of today. The challenge will be to maximize those benefits and reduce the risks to shape the electric grid of tomorrow. What do you think? How do you see New Brunswick meeting the electrical demands of the future?